Hey y'all, today let's do some Carpless Strong synthesis in Reactor. I made a simple Carpless Strong synth in Pure Data a few weeks back, and so I'll keep my explanation here relatively brief, but Carpless Strong is a type of physical modeling synthesis where we model the sound of a vibrating string. We do this by having a very short delay, and by very short I mean the delay itself happens in the audio range, 20 to 20,000 times a second. What we do is we take a burst of noise, a very short noise, this is the plucking of the string in our metaphor, this goes into the delay, and then it gets filtered, and then the delay is fed back into itself. So in our new reactor ensemble here I'm going to delete my inputs, and then I'm going to start by making that noise burst. I'm going to use our noise oscillator here, let's create a constant for it at 1, and then let's make an envelope for it. For this envelope, I want to create an AD envelope. So this is just a plucking sound, so the attack and delay will happen with a single press of the key. It's not that the attack happens and it waits for me to release the key, it's just the plucking happens when I hit the key. LFO envelope, AD. Uh, I have another video where I talk about these different envelopes. How we're going to use this is we're going to multiply our envelope by our noise. Let's add a gate. MIDI control, that'll be both the trigger for it and the amplitude. And then mm, we could create some controls for this, but let's just create a couple constants for now. Let's run this into our outputs. Think, think, and see what we got. Okay, no surprises there. That's our noise. There's no Carpless Strong happening yet, but there's a noise. Uh, I wouldn't quite call that a burst yet, it's a little bit too gentle, so I'm going to change the numbers here. Uh, I played with this beforehand, obviously, I always test these things out before I record the video. There's a noise pulse. So sounding pretty good there. All right, so now we need to take this noise pulse and we need to put it through a delay. I'm going to use the single delay here. Bink. Now, probably performance-wise, I should acknowledge that this might be better done in core, but I just want to show a simple way to do this in Reactor Primary here. I should also note that in the filters here, there is a modal bank, which is actually very good for physical modeling synthesis too, but you can see how terrifying this object looks with all its inputs here. I think there are already some videos out there. I think I remember seeing a tutorial years ago, might have been in Reactor 5 by Salamander Anagram, but I recommend that. Maybe one day I'll talk about this, but not today. For today, let's keep it simple and, and keep our concepts visible and clear so we can expand on these later. Okay, our pulse goes into the delay, and then let's run it to the outputs. Bink, bink. For now, let's create a control for this delay, and now I'm going to hit a key. And now our click is delayed. It happens 500 milliseconds later. Okay, let's add our feedback. And so the way I would do that is I would start by adding. So now rather than going directly into the delay, we add this to the output. But before we connect the output to this addition, Let's connect it to a multiply so we have some control over this. Create control, feed back, and then run that in here. Go to our panel. Now I have the speed of the delay and feedback as controls. Now I probably don't want that feedback at one. Let's do that slightly lower, speed up our delay a little bit, and let's listen to that. If I crank this up, it'll go forever. All right, again, I've got a, another tutorial about how to make a tape delay, and we've done this feedback idea before. We need a couple things here. Now, the first is that before this feedback, we want to put in a filter. I'm just going to very simply put in a one pole low pass filter here HPLP one pole. Bink. Input goes there. Let's create a control. We'll rename that in just a second. And then the low pass goes back into the input. Once you have feedback going on, it's very hard not to have a little bit of overlap of your wires and crossing of wires, but I'll try to keep this as clean as possible. Let's call this damping. Okay, and so now on my panel, I've got the delay, feedback, and damping. And now we can hear how the 
high frequencies are rolled off each time through that feedback. Okay, this is still not synthesis. This is noise going through a feedback delay with a filter. And so in order to make this follow our pitch, first let's create our note pitch MIDI in. We need to take the note pitch, convert it to a frequency. And I always get this wrong the first time. Uh, log F. Yeah, I got it wrong. It's not log, it's exp F. And so this is a conversion from pitch to frequency. So whatever note we play on the keyboard, that's now converted into a frequency. And then our equation for turning a frequency into the number of milliseconds a delay is, is to divide it by 1000. I'll throw up my quick math slides here, but I go into that a little bit more slowly in the Pure Data tutorial, but I won't belabor that here. So math, let's add a divide. And importantly, it's 1000 divided by the frequency, not vice versa. Remember, order matters when you're doing division. It doesn't matter when you're doing multiplication, but it's important that this 1000 lives on top here. All right. And then let's run this into the delay. And so now our delay time is the note pitch converted into a frequency, 1000 divided by the note pitch converted into the frequency, which should give us the milliseconds of that frequency. Hey, we're getting notes there. Whoops, that was not the synth making a mistake. That was me. All right, well, let's crank up the feedback here a little bit. Very nice. Uh, dampening, so again, as our dampening goes down here, we let fewer and fewer of the high frequencies go through. Yeah, that's nothing. There we are. Let's add our audio voice combiner, and this is going to allow us to do polyphony. We might listen to this at a different place, but I'll leave that be just for the moment. Bink, bink, audio voice combiner. Let's set our voices here to be four, and now we can do chords. Ah, interesting. Since they're ringing out too long, it's not letting me re-articulate them. I would need more voices there. I'm actually surprised at that behavior, but I'll have to think about why that is. Now we've made too little feedback. Now, if we want a little bit less of that noise in there, we could listen to it at the point of feedback here. So this means it's already gone through the filtering once, and so it'll take some of the edge off that noise. Not that different, honestly. Meh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, unimpressed with what that difference is, but just for fun, well, let's keep it there. Uh, we could try a longer. Envelope, it, the defaults here at the start were 40 and 40. Again, it becomes more of an arco sound. You could make an AR envelope, which would sustain as long as you held it. But I'm going to command Z back to our plucky sounds here. So there you go. Quick and easy car plus strong synth. If I were going to do this as a real instrument, I would uh, consider the ranges of these knobs. I think there's a lot of not so useful damping settings in the lower settings here. And same with feedback. Oh, I've taught the damping too low there. Let's... Yeah, maybe it's about even at 0.7 where that gets useful. So I might set the minimum of this to be 0.7. And then I've got a more useful expressive range on that knob. Again, for this, I might set the minimum to be 70. And I might even go over 120 here 
I don't know, 130, we'll see. Um, just so I can get the filter completely out of the way. That's a nice one right there. And then if you want to explore other things, you could take this noise macro that they have, place your noise with that, bink, bink. Let's clean up our panel. And so now I've got something where I can choose between white and pink noise. And now I have a, a bunch of different options to tailor this sound a little bit. Again, this is a simple start, but could perhaps be expanded to something. Whether or not it's a useful synth to have in your toolkit, it's useful to be able to understand the construction of a simple car plus strong synth. All right, that's all I got for today. Let me know what you come up with.